Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to do a group test of three different Raspberry Pi cameras so we can see just what the differences are between the cheaper and more expensive models. So let's go and delve into some Raspberry Pi image capture. Right. The three cameras we're going to test are the Zero Cam, which is also sold as a Zero Spy camera, the Raspberry Pi camera version 2, and the Raspberry Pi high quality camera. These span a range of price points, with the Zero Cam currently selling for about $20 or £15, the Pi version 2 camera costing about $30 or £24, and the high quality camera priced at about $50 or £50. This said, note that the high quality camera does not include a lens, so this will be an additional cost for most users. For image capture, the Zero Cam has a 5 megapixel sensor with a maximum resolution of 2592 by 1944. Meanwhile, the Pi version 2 camera has an 8 megapixel sensor with a maximum resolution of 3280 by 2464 and the high quality camera has a 12 megapixel sensor that can capture a 4056 by 3040 pixel image. Note that the sensors on both the Zero Cam and the Pi version 2 camera are roughly 4.6 millimeters diagonally, whilst the high quality camera has a larger 7.9 millimeter diagonal sensor. All three cameras can be used to record 1080p video at up to 30 frames per second. 720p at up to 60 frames a second, and 480p at up to 90 frames a second. And with the right software, the high quality camera can also record video at up to 120 frames a second in 480p. All three cameras connect to a Raspberry Pi using its 15 pin camera serial interface or CSI port. This provides direct access to the Pi system on a chip and is available in two form factors. Specifically, most Raspberry Pi models have a full-size CSI connector, like the one we can see here on this Raspberry Pi 4. However, the Pi Zero models have their own smaller CSI connector. Note that the Pi version 2 and high-quality cameras come with a ribbon cable for connecting to a full-size CSI connector, whilst the Zero Cam is integrated into a ribbon cable that fits the smaller CSI connector on the Pi Zero. However, alternative ribbon cables and adapters are available to allow all three cameras to be used on either type of Pi. And indeed, in this video, we'll be testing all the cameras on this Raspberry Pi 4. Right, the first camera we're going to test is the Zero Cam, which really is a very tiny piece of hardware indeed. And as we're going to be using it on a Raspberry Pi 4, we need to fit it in this adapter. And with that taken care of, we can again call on the magic of filmmaking to get everything up and running. As you can see, I've mounted the Zero Cam on a piece of flexible mesh to allow me to position it for this test, as it's really not easy to temporarily mount the smaller Raspberry Pi cameras. Anyway, if we now head on over to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, here we are, where as you can see I've opened up Raspberry Pi configuration and I've checked the camera is enabled, which it is. And so to test it out, we can open up a terminal, I've got one open already for us, and I've got this command waiting to be executed, raspi still minus o zero cam one jpug, and what this will do is to open up a camera preview window with a default time of five seconds, and it'll save some output, that's why we've got the O flag here, and it'll call the output zero cam one a photograph, which will be stored in the default location, which is the Pi's home directory. So let's uh, press the button, and uh, there we are. And as you can see, I've got an array of objects set up to be test subjects for this picture, lots of different colors and things going on there. It has been taken our image, I hope anyway. Let's go over to our home directory, down here, our home folder. There's the file, let's open it up. and. Uh, there it is, I'll press uh, F11 to full screen for us. And this is a pretty good image, I think, from such a small, cheap camera. Let's press G here to go to a 100% zoom, so you're now seeing the image at full resolution. 
If you're watching this video at 1080p, you're seeing a pixel for pixel representation now. And it's pretty good, isn't it? If we just scroll around a bit, this is a rather impressive image from the Zero Cam. Colors are pretty good. The uh, blacks and the whites are pretty good. We've got white over here and white down there and black over there. That, that's not too bad. And the image is pretty sharp from such a low cost camera with a fixed focus lens. Now, of course, what we really want to do is to compare this image to the output of the other cameras. But just before we do that, let's record a piece of video. Let's come out of this and go back to our terminal under there and execute this command here, rasp vid, which is the video equivalent of the still image capture. We've got a T flag here with a 20,000. That means record for 20,000 milliseconds, or in other words, 20 seconds. And then the O flag here is again for some output, which here will be called 0 cam one h 264 So let's record our video. And the first thing you'll notice is when we record video, we get a crop of the sensor. We're seeing 1920 to here. Let's bring in an exciting piece of action. Here's the Dalek. Yes, we're seeing 1920 to 80 being captured as a crop from the sensor with its resolution of 2592 by 1944. How long are we doing in our 20 seconds, I wonder? Have we got time to come back? No, we haven't. That was the video. And let's just see if it worked. It should have done, of course. No reason why not. There's the file. Let's just bring it up. And it'll play in a second. There we are. Let's full screen it. And this is our masterpiece. Zero cam one, eight, two, six, four. Will it win an Oscar? Oh, look. That's not bad, is it? Again, I'm impressed with the, the output, the performance of the Zero Cam, the cheapest Raspberry Pi camera available, and the results are still rather impressive. But uh, anyway, what we really want to do is some comparisons, so we'll now move on to test out the other cameras. Greetings, here I am back again, and it's now time to check out the Raspberry Pi camera module version two. Today, this is the standard official Raspberry Pi camera and replaced the version one camera in 2016. As you can see, the circuit board is actually labeled version 2.1, although I don't think a version 2.0 was ever sold. If we compare the camera module version two to the zero cam, we can see that it's a much larger module, although the actual camera component is pretty much the same size. Do remember, however, that the version 2 camera has an 8 megapixel sensor compared to the 5 megapixel one in the Zero Cam. So, let's get the version 2 camera all connected up and running, and I've used the same rig as before with the addition of a piece of string to keep the longer ribbon cable under control. This is, I think, my first Raspberry Pi rig to incorporate knotted twine, but I'm trying to position the cameras so they can take as similar an image as possible. So let's mosey on over to the desktop to see how I've done. And uh, here we are. I've set things up to take a picture. So let's uh, go on and do that. Let's take our still. I've got a pretty similar field of view, but we've got a much wider lens on the version two camera. So there we are, we've taken our picture. And let's go across to the uh, folder where it is. Look, where's our picture? It's down there. Took a second to find it. There we are, Christopher, there's the image. And we're at F11 again. And as with the zero cam, the image looks pretty good. I'll go in to do the 100% view. And of course, this time we have a smaller section of the image coming up because this is a larger resolution image. And focus there in particular is very good. That's a very nice sharp part of the image, isn't it? The blacks and the whites are similarly pretty good. It's not massively different though. It's, you know, it's probably a better image. We've certainly got more resolution here, which is always a good thing to have. But if we just go back to seeing the whole image, it's not massively different. And if I bring up versions of both images, they're fairly similar. There's not a massive amount of difference here. The color is clearly different. Probably I'd say the color is better in the version two camera image than in the zero cam image. But this of course is before any color correction. And to some extent, they're just different. If I show you the 100% view, the pixel to pixel comparison, again, it's, it's not massively different. I think for many purposes, the Zero Cam is a better value camera, but uh, it depends on your point of view. And of course, the great thing is you can look at the images here and make your own mind up. Although, of course, remember that YouTube will have performed lots of video compression on anything you're seeing in this video. Anyway, talking of video, let's do some video capture. We must do that as well, of course. Let's bring up the uh, video capture thing here. And this is interesting. If we do this, 
you'll see once again, we've got a crop from the middle of the sensor, exactly the same way we did with the Azera cam. And therefore you can see less of the Dalek in the same position. Hello, I'm a Dalek going across, giving excitement to this video. Is he gonna come back this time? Or well, he might do. Yes, the Dalek's coming back. He didn't come back in the last one, did he? That's the benefit of having the, the version two camera. But uh, let's just to go and uh, play that video. It must be recorded. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Let's play that video. And the fact we're using a crop again is interesting. It means you get no extra resolution in terms of recording 1080p video using the version two camera versus the much cheaper zero cam. And to some extent, you actually get a worse position because you're actually having a crop of a smaller area of the sensor because the eight megapixel and five megapixel sensors in the version two camera and the zero cam are the same physical size. So of course, we're using a smaller area of the sensor to record video on the version two camera. Right, let's now move on to the Raspberry Pi high quality camera. And what we effectively have here is a 12 megapixel digital back that can take either a C or a CS mount lens, depending on whether or not you leave in place this C to CS mount adapter. And we've also got a back focus adjustment ring here, which is quite nice and a locking screw for that. And at the base of the camera, we've got a standard quarter inch mounting thread, which means we can mount this camera using a standard quarter inch thread, although the position of the ribbon cable coming down at the back of the camera right behind that is far from ideal. You get the impression this is a product designed by an electronics designer who was told to put a thread on and he did, but he didn't think at all about the implications of how it would actually work on, on most mounting equipment, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, to use this camera, we need to first off take off a little cap like that, and we need to add a lens. And when I first bought this camera, we can see the sensor in there, look, when I first bought the camera, I thought I was gonna use this little TV lens I had lying around from a CCTV camera, nice quality lens from many, many years ago. This is a C-mount lens, it'll go on perfectly well. But I found the quality of the images I got just wasn't very good. This lens simply can't resolve high definition images. And so I actually bought the 16 millimeter recommended lens for the camera here. And so we'll put this thing on like this, it'll just screw in. We're now getting quite a, a solid device. This is really a very, very serious Raspberry Pi camera. And as you can hopefully see here, we've got adjustment for aperture and for focus on the camera itself. These are of course manual, which is good or bad depending on your point of view. I like manual controls, but if you want an auto focus camera or you want a fixed focus camera, which can focus on a range of distances, this is not an ideal lens to use. And it's also worth noting, of course, that this is not a free lens. You had to purchase this lens. This lens cost me 50 pounds. So I've got, got here now a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars worth of equipment, which is seven times more than the cost of the zero cam. So let's go and see if the performance of this unit really matches up to its increased cost. And here we are with everything set up and running, a very different type of rig to our previous two tests, but then the high quality camera is a much larger module than the previous two cameras we've tested, even before you've added on the quite large lens. And it's worth noting with the 16 millimeter lens on this camera, I've had to move the camera twice as far away from our test subjects as I did in our previous tests because of the narrower field of view. So let's go across to the desktop and we'll take an image and I put a T flag in here with a 10 second delay just so we can see the image a bit longer. That's been helping me with focusing, but if I press the button, you will see we get a very nice looking image. And uh, that's what we can see from the preview, isn't it? There we are, let's just let that finish off. I shouldn't have added the 10 seconds in, there we are, it's finished. And if we go to the Pi Home page and where are we, we're down here, there's the HQ Cam image and click on that, bring that up and full screen it. It is a very nice image. There is a certain richness to the quality of the image coming off this larger sensor on the HQ camera compared to the previous cameras we've looked at. And uh, if we go to a full screen, go in like that. Focus here depends very much on where we happen to be in the image. I think I was focusing up towards the top on things like the, the uh, police box there. It's text on that, that's nice and sharp. Bits of the pencils there are nice and sharp. The top of that sort of cork effect on the YouTube flask is sharp. The text there is very good. So this is 
quite impressive and I think the colours here are the most natural of the ones we've seen. This really is a very nice quality of image. And before we compare this to the other cameras, let's just take a piece of video. Let's go into the terminal again and just bring up the command for that. And here you will see there's a slight crop, but not a very big crop on the image there. Things are shaking a little bit. Let's bring in the Dalek though. And one of the issues we have here is depth of field. You see that depth of field is, is quite narrow here. There's a Dalek moving around our video image. As I say, slight crop, but clearly we're not just using the middle of the sensor. We're sampling from a large part of the sensor to take this piece of video. Oh, I am a Dalek. Oh dear. It finished before you could say exterminate. If we go across to the home folder again, we've got our high quality camera image there. And of course it plays out as we would expect, working a rather nicely. Indeed, a bit of image shake on the start there. I've had to put an extra little table in the room to accommodate the camera being far enough away from the test subject. But clearly there, we're getting decent quality video. And it's also worth just pointing out, this is really giving us much more creative control. It's a very different type of instrument to work with the high quality camera compared to the other cameras. Let's just go back to the taking a picture. Let's just take another picture. Let's give ourselves a bit more time to work with it as we're setting it up and we'll call it cam uh, one like that and bring up the preview. And uh, I'll go back to the Dalek, bring the Dalek in over like that. And of course, here we've got the opportunity to go in and change the focus. We can focus on the Dalek and have a out of focus background with a nice bit of bokeh there. We couldn't do that type of effect with the previous cameras. And that really is the benefit of using the Raspberry Pi HQ camera. And if we bring it up on the screen, let's just look at the result of that image. Should we record it somewhere down here? There we are, bring it up. And this should be a nice image. And if we go into a full on that beautiful bokeh there behind the, uh, the Dalek, this is, as I said, that's a fantastic result from a Raspberry Pi camera. Oh, and before I forget, let's have some three-way comparisons of the Zero Cam and the version 2 Cam and the high quality camera. And here we're looking at some scaled sections where Clearly the high quality camera gives us the best quality image. Certainly the color reproduction is the best for the high quality camera. Although for me, the second best quality here is from a zero cam with the worst being the, the version two camera. And if we now look at some 100% sections zoomed right in, again, the high quality camera wins. It really should given the price of the camera. And again, for me, the second choice would be the zero cam, which really is, I think, the best value camera here on test. As we've seen in this video, all of the different Raspberry Pi cameras can capture decent photographs and videos. And for many projects, the cheaper models deliver perfectly satisfactory results. In my next Raspberry Pi video, I'm going to delve deeper into Pi photography with an episode all about how to capture the best time-lapse movies using our favourite SBC. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.